Hi everyone. We're here today with Mary Bramble Scott, who uh, has been teaching here at the Pottery now for about three years. Uh, she's been a potter for over 30, and uh, she actually has a degree in ceramics from our own Yukon, uh, where she studied with Minnie Nagoro. And uh, we have a teapot show coming up in about a month. Uh, the opening for that is August the 25th, and the show starts on the 8th. And so Mary is going to talk to us today uh, to people who have already done some work with ceramics about how to make the perfect teapot. So as you can see here, we have a lot of different shapes. So Mary, what's the perfect shape for a teapot? So there's actually no really perfect shape. Today we've got a lot of teapots that are uh, made either vertical, more tall, more bulbous. What you need to consider is how does that shape fit in with how you're going to attach the spout and the handle? So today there's a lot of sculptural teapots, as you might see in, in some of the Lark books, like 500 teapots. And they're functional, but the average person using a teapot today is looking for more of a shape like any one of these. These have a, a nice bulbous shape, or this one is square, uh, but they all have a nice feel in the hand for when you're serving tea. Now, I know with mugs, uh, sometimes it's a little bit about where the handle goes on the mug. So I noticed this one and the other ones have a handle on the side, but this one has a handle on the top. So which is better? So there's nothing that's really better. It's what suits the actual design of the maker when they create that pot. When you are creating the handle for a pot, some of these are pulled. You can tell that this one is a pulled handle. Some of them are rolled. This might be a rolled one. This one is molded, and this one is also pulled. When it comes to handles, the handles for a teapot should not be too close to the pot. You don't ever want to have your fingers actually touching the pot because the oh, contents is going to be very hot. That's really important. And it needs to be comfortable in your hand. So this one is very comfortable and it's far enough away from the pot so that you don't burn yourself. Again, this one as well. Uh, this one has an added little feature. There's a little leaf here which gives you a place to rest your thumb for added balance. So each one of them has good characteristics. Something that if, if a teapot is too, the handle is too close to the pot or it's too small for you to get a good grip on. Remember the pot right now is empty but when it's full with a, a lot of water it's going to be heavier so if, if you can't hold it up straight from that weight then the handle is not really useful. Um, and then, of course, uh, teapots need a spout, so that must be a really important part. But these teapots have spouts that are kind of alike. Is that a good shape to use, or how do you decide what shape? So, the tea, again, when you're starting to create a teapot, you should have an idea ahead of time, maybe even a few drawings, which show you the direction that you're going to go. You, you should have in your mind's eye as the maker an idea for the full form. So think of the finished product even as far as what color you're going to be glazing it. So these spouts, like this is a simple uh, thrown spout. I believe this one is a thrown spout. Uh, this one is actually just, even though the pot is thrown, this is just folded uh, slab of clay. Um, there's some things about a spout that are very important to a teapot. First off, the spout should be higher than the pot, or at least as high as the pot. So the end of the spout needs to be higher than the height Correct. of the pot. This one you can see, which is the folded clay. The, the uh, bottom of the spout is very low, so hmm. that this pot could not have water in it or tea in it past this point because oh. it will start to come up out of the spout. Again, this one um, is good. Around about here would be your level before things start to come out. This one is excellent. Again, it's way high so that you can fill this all the way up. Um, the same thing with this one as well. This one is much higher than you would have for 
the contents of the teapot. Oh, I did not know that. Thank you for yep. telling us that. So the other thing about teapot spouts that's important is that the interior of the spout right here needs to be sharp, right on the interior. The, the outside can be softened, but right here needs to be very sharp. What that does is it cuts the liquid as it's poured out. When you pouring the, the tea out and you go like this, this sharp edge prevents the dripping oh, of tea out that's of the key, pot. So definitely. having a nice sharp edge there, there's a nice sharp edge on this one right here that will cut the liquid inside. Uh, this one's a little bit softer, but you know, each pot depends on the actual shape of the pot. Sometimes you'll find even though that hasn't been done, the pot will work fine. But that's pretty much a guiding principle that there be a sharp edge there. And how about the lid? I noticed you put your hand on the lid when you were making uh, a pouring movement. It's so lids have a, a couple of uh, guidelines on them. First off, the lid um, can be, it can either fit into the pot and rest on the rim like this. This one actually rests on the outside of the pot and has a flange that goes deeply into the pot. Um, this one is almost like a, a cork bottle stopper, um, all of which are, are very valid types of lids. The general principle here is that a lid should have a hole in it. The hole in the lid allows air into the pot so that when you start to pour, you don't get that glug glug kind of pouring. You get a fluid pour from that. Um, some of these others do not have holes but that isn't necessarily going to mean that they will do that glug. If the lid is a little bit loose, air can get in through that. The other thing about lids is making sure they stay on. So as I said before, this one stays on because it has that long flange. This one is very cleverly has a lock on it. And what that means is the maker has created two little pieces of clay that fit into two openings here. And when you turn, the lid is locked. Excellent. And the lid can't come off. Hmm. What this maker has done, which is very clever, is she has put a design that when that design lines up, right here along the side, the lid is at its locks. And who made this teapot? This one was made uh, by Sarah Anders. Very nice. Um, anything else that we missed? Um, I would say that each one of these teapots um, is beautiful in its own right. Uh, the design on each one of them is marvelous. The person has taken the uh, time to fully realize the design. Uh, plan to do something with each part of your teapot, with the lid, with the bottom, with the spout, with the handle that all unifies to, com to create one unified design for the pot. That is excellent advice. So as I said, we have a tea show coming up, uh, which starts on August 8th here at the Pottery Inner Gallery. The opening, which is going to feature tea-related food, is on the 25th. And Mary, I know you have a really great Instagram. Uh, can people find you on Instagram? They can. It's Bramble Ceramics on Instagram. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.